Hi there, I just wanted to show you a couple of new products today and the first one is an updated version of the popular Rager sub platter and bearing. Just a quick word on the RP1 and P1 turntables. We take the bearing apart, we'll see that it follows the standard Rager pattern. So this sub platter will fit in the standard Rager sleeve, bearing sleeve, and it will work just fine. The RP1 and P1, they use a much slimmer bearing sleeve. So this is the standard 18mm type. The RP1 and P1, they use a smaller 12mm, I would say, sleeve. This will fit in the standard sleeve, in the RP1 and P1 sleeve, but you can't use this uprated sleeve on that turntable unless you enlarge the hole in the flint to 18mm and put this sleeve in. Very similar to the Delvin thrust plate version I've shown you before. It has the Delvin liners at the top and bottom of the sleeve, but in this case we have a silicon nitride ball in an aluminium alloy carrier at the bottom of the sleeve and the ball is fixed in place at the bottom of the sleeve where it should be. Just a note on filling these bearings with oil, filling with oil is probably the wrong word because they don't need much oil inside the sleeve. The shaft displaces pretty much all of the air inside here apart from a bit around the ball and the void in between the two liners. So we don't need much oil in here. I'd say start with about four drops. Um, you may need a little bit more but you can, uh, you can experiment. When you push your put your sub platter in place, in this this uh, sleeve doesn't have much oil in it, but you can see um, because of the tight tolerances of the Delvin liners, air gets trapped. So basically, the thing to do when you're installing your sub platter is to push down, putting equal pressure on. Um, the sides of the sub platter so push down evenly and move it from left to right while folding it down be patient and eventually you'll hear a bit of hissing as the air starts to escape from the sleeve and then it fills with oil and then you'll see we've got a drop of oil on the bottom of this one but when it's full of oil you'll see a ring of oil around the top of the shaft where you can just see it in between the the sub platter and the sleeve and that oil will uh, it will form around the recess at the top of the bearing and that will ensure you've got adequate lubrication for the for the top sleeve as well as the bottom. When you've got a dry bearing with no oil in it it will it will run more freely than when the bearing is properly filled with oil and that is because because of the tight bear the tight clearances um, of the bearing of the Delrin sleeves on the shaft, the viscosity of the oil will cause some drag in the bearing. I mean, this bearing doesn't have much oil in it, but you can see they spin perfectly well. Now, another advantage of keeping the bearing fully lubricated is one, it needs to be to ensure a long service life but also it makes the bearing run much more quietly so a dry bearing you can spin it up it might run all day but it will produce more noise than a correctly lubricated bearing with a correct uh, light oil within it let's put that to one side and I've also produced a suitable platter for regular turntables standard glass platter which is very good in my opinion. It's about two kilograms in weight. A lot of people want to replace that with an acrylic platter, a 12 millimeter thick acrylic platter. It'll weigh just under a kilogram, so you're losing a lot of mass there, which isn't ideal. You want to be as close to two kilograms as possible. So in order to get that mass, we've got an inch thick piece of acrylic that I've machined into a platter. Even a square of acrylic sheet of acrylic sheets, so you know, more or less the right size to make this platter, 
fantastic acrylic sheet. It uh, varies. It can vary by a millimetre across its uh, dimensions in thickness. So the platter has to be machined, fully machined, to ensure that it's completely true and level. This one's probably about 23.5 mil now. And on the reverse side, I've got a pocket cut into the bottom of the platter. This enables the sub platter to sit inside here. So you know, put it in, in place where it would be. That sits inside the pocket. You've got your motor pulley and belt, and they're all running inside the just show you the edge. So in practice this platter would it would run close to your plinth, probably be about a three millimeter gap in between the in between the platter and the top of the plinth. So I like that look. I like the platter to run close to the plinth. I don't like them raised up. I like it. And it also sort of hides the belt and the it's a shame to hide the uh, the sub platter because they you know they look nice but uh, this is a great way of doing it with a pocket cut in you've probably seen other platters like this it's been used in many designs of turntable but it works well and it's a good way of doing it and this is um, it's a good upgrade for your ragers and like I said it runs at the same height as the original platter because of the because of the pocket cut underneath so doesn't affect the beta of your arm so you can just replace your your old platter with this one and everything will be okay don't need to use a mat on it it's got a recess cut in for your record label it's about a mil and a half higher than the standard platter and that is to compensate for the fact that you won't be using a mat so it's um, like I said a great upgrade okay thank you uh, more videos soon bye now